Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we are going to take a look at the third part in a series of calculating tap conductor sizes for electrical installations with regard to 14100. First thing I want to point out before we get into this is that by the rule 14100, we are not allowed to downsize our conductor without overcurrent protection unless it is on the downstream side of an overcurrent device. Hey, there are exceptions to the rule. In previous videos, we looked at voltage drop applications as well as what happens when our tap conductor is up to and not or up to and including sorry three meters in length in this video we are looking at tap conductors that are over three meters but not over 7.5 meters so we're going to take a look here's our tap conductor this is we're going to say five meters that puts us above the three meter mark but under the 7.5 as required by 14100 c what it tells us in 14100C, well, before we get to that, let's take a look. As in the previous video, I'm running with the same number so we can see the comparison between the two. Um, if I look at this side of my installation, as mentioned before, again, this is just a branch circuit calculation. I would do this just as I would do any other branch circuit calculation. It's on the downstream side of an overcurrent, so there are no special rules as far as tap conductors. I have a 68 amp load. Again, with the 75 degree termination, I can go table two in the 75 degree column, and I can choose a number four, good for 85 amps. Okay, and I go to table 13, I select my overcurrent. To protect my 85 amp conductor, I'm gonna go with a 90 amp overcurrent. Okay, so when we take a look at 14100, item C, what it tells us is this. Just like in 14100B, when I calculate the size of my tap conductor, I need to keep in mind, my tap conductor has to have an ampacity greater than the overcurrent that it supplies. So in this case, a 90 amp overcurrent, I would require a tap conductor that is at least 90 amps. So that's kind of the first choice that we have from item C. We're gonna say that if I take that 90 amps to table two, 75 degree column, I have a choice. I can go with either a number three, which is good for 100 amps, that is larger than my overcurrent, or one third the feeder ampacity. Now this is not a choice that you get to make. It is the larger of the two wins in this situation. So what we need to do first is figure out what is the tap conductor based off the overcurrent that it supplies. It needs to be larger than that. That's our first. Okay, so we end up with the number three is the first portion of our choice. The second is I'm going to go over to my feeder conductor, which is a thousand kc mil. I'm going to take the ampacity of that feeder conductor, which is 545 amps, and I'm going to divide it by three because it tells me 14100c, my tap is either slightly larger than the ampacity of my overcurrent or one-third the ampacity of my feeder conductor, which in this case, 545 divided by 3, ends up at 181.667 amps. I'm going to look at these two numbers. This is my winner right here. I have to go with the larger of the two when I'm selecting this tap conductor. So we go to table 2, 75 degree column, and it turns out that we actually need to go with a, oops, sorry, a 3 aught. Good for 200 amps. Okay, so again, when we're selecting a tap conductor that's greater than three meters, but does not exceed 7.5 meters in length, we have to make the choice between our tap conductor based off of being larger than the ampacity of the overcurrent it supplies, or one third the ampacity of the feeder conductor, whichever is the larger of the two, which in this case wins. Not always the case, but in this case it does. Hopefully this has helped. This concludes our series on tap conductors. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.